Okay, welcome to the third video on um, annelids. And we're going to be talking about feeding, and this is where we get into modifications to the prostomium, which you'll remember is the head. And the different uh, modifications generally are around uh, what they are feeding on. So, uh, hunting carnivores. Um, if they're carnivores, they'll have several par pairs of eyes, jaws to capture their prey. They usually crawl around the bottom. Um, you can find them living under rocks or in burrows. And um, they will sometimes um, capture and then chew up their prey, or else they may um, work more like a mosquito where they'll puncture their prey sometimes poison it and then suck out the vital fluids like a kind of like a spider or a mosquito and they are pretty amazing predators so here is uh, something called a bristle worm that is um, eating this fish that it's captured so the fish looks like a, it would be something that might eat the annelid but here it is the other way around and you can tell that that's on top of a, a coral and next which is in the phylum Cnidaria, and the sponge right next to it, phylum Periphera. Okay, so here it would be your uh, predatory type um, uh, polychaete, and um, hopefully we can get some of these to, uh, you'll be able to see this in action, but you can see the uh, prostomium is not at the very front of the, of the, um, of the worm's body and normally the prostomium would be because it's the head but they can shoot their pharynx out this um, part out and um, it can shoot ahead very quickly uh, plunge its jaws into its uh, victim its, and then poison it and so you'll see the poison gland there so um, Here are some micrographs of polychaete worm jaws. And you can see they're quite uh, uh, good at grasping and, and um, digging into prey. You can see the teeth. Well, they remind me a little bit of shark's teeth, uh, especially some of the serrated ones. Okay, deposit feeding or eating any old dirt. All right, so it's... Um, it's a basking shark, obviously not a uh, invertebrate. It's a vertebrate, but this um, it so, sort of gives you the idea of what a deposit feeder will do. They just go along munching away on what comes up in front of them. Now, uh, on the surface of these uh, very small particles in sediment, you'll have a slime layer of bacteria and microorganisms, other microorganisms, and uh, so these will be coating it the, like a film on the sand. And of course, you have to eat lots and lots of weight in order to get enough nutrition. So some of these things will eat their own body weight in a day. And if you try to imagine eating uh, 80 kilos or 70 kilos of food in a day uh, to match your own body weight then um, it would be pretty hard to get through all of that. So, But they continuously just eat um, the sediment and digest the little bits off of the top, off of it. Okay, so there you go. Non-selective deposit feeding, any old dirt. So you can stop the video and read this over. Here is um, Arenicola. And they are, uh, we'll find these in, um, in the estuary, and if you, uh, as well as, uh, well, generally in the, they're in estuary and intertidal areas. And you'll see the little piles of poo around, and then you know you're, um, where the Aranacola are. So they, um, uh, they essentially ingest particles out of the front that fall down this burrow that they've made. Uh, where the arrows are, and then um, they make little poo piles as they uh, poo out the, the sediment. But they also 
cause a lot of water to move through the sediment and they um, will take the anoxic layer down and these things can reach huge um, densities uh, and so they help to make uh, intertidal um, mud flats which don't look like they have much productivity or much much growing on them very very productive environments um, here you got bamboo worms which are also a deposit feeder and they you'll see these little tubes sticking up out of the out of the sediment sometimes okay bamboo worms selective deposit feeding are right, spaghetti worms so these things uh, put their little tentacles out and uh, that's why they're called spaghetti because it looks like a whole lot of little pieces of spaghetti coming out um, and then they are ciliated and the grooves can move the particles along the tentacles uh, towards the mouth where they can be ingested so they taste the particles with those tentacles and here you can see the tentacles of a spaghetti worm all out on the surface and um, they will be able to taste the particles and bring them to their mouth so they're not picking up just any old dirt they're picking up the organic material that falls onto the surface um, if you look at the image to the right you can see that um, the they have uh, uh, this deposit feeding worm has um, made itself a little home and what it does is it glues bits of sand bits of old sh a little shell and other things that it um, finds in the environment together with mucus and makes a little tube for itself and here's a nice image of one of those tubes you can see the um, the algae growing on it and so by creating these tubes they also create substrate for other organisms and here's a nice picture of a spaghetti worm poking its uh, tentacles out onto the the surface of a sandy uh, sea bottom there's another picture uh, here we go Here's a picture of a uh, predatory um, annelid on the left and a spaghetti worm out of its tube on the right. And again, you can see that both of these are annelids because they're segmented and they have appendages, a single pair of appendages coming off of every segment on uh, the lateral sides. Okay, suspension feeders. So some um, feeders we've talked about have farmed or eaten bacteria out of dirt, uh, out of the sediment. Others have um, picked particles off of the sediment. And now we're talking about suspension feeders, ones that take particles out of the, um, the water column. So they have things called radioles, and we'll have a look at these. Here are radioles, okay, the radioles of a Christmas tree worm. And so you can actually see the little red eye areas of these uh, this worm. And it's got a little cap called an operculum. It can withdraw back down into its, um, uh, into its tube, and then the... Um, a roundish yellow lined uh, cap that you see uh, at the bottom of the image is like a trapdoor that can be drawn over the top of the uh, tube and these things move very very quickly once they withdraw them so but they do get bitten off occasionally and by fish and the like and so they are um, they have to be able to move very quickly So the radioles are ciliated little um, sieves that um, create a water current across the, the, um, the fan, across the structure, 
and take particles out and then the cilia move it down to the to the center uh, down to the mouth and so these things uh, are suspension feeders and here's another picture of a, a local fan worm and here's what a fan worm looks like coming out of its um, mud su substrate uh, sediment tube and you can tell that it is a annelid because it's segmented and you can see the little parapodia and setae albeit small they're still there on each of the segments and this one is a, known as a feather duster worm so it's another one that's suspension feeding and uh, very beautiful These are, this is a uh, local um, this local one and that picture was taken by Paul so um, you're likely to see these feather duster worms around the uh, rocky shore and here's what it looks like withdrawn and there are other ones though that um, use their jaws to uh, catch drifting macroalgae uh, so these are essentially sieve-like jaws that they move through like a spoonbill mouth and then other ones that use a mucus bubble at the mouth of their bub at their burrow and then so particles that are in the water column stick to that mucus bubble and then they just eat that mucus bubble so uh, not all species with jaws are predators. Generally, though, if you see ones with jaws, you're looking at a predator.